you've taught me some things that I've never seen anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and I don't even know if what, what, cause I know you've never shared this publicly, mm-hmm. but you know, even just the way you do achievement and goal setting and processing, mm-hmm. you know, and there's, there's some deep stuff like nuance, but powerful around standards and, and rewards. Mm-hmm. But the visualization one was one I'd never heard anybody mm-hmm. talk about around, like mm-hmm. people talk about visualization, but mm-hmm. you were making us rewind it, change the, like, mm-hmm. and you mentioned, you know, the, a few different places where you're inspired around this. Mm-hmm. C- could you unpack that? Cause like, I've been doing this for a long time, 20 some years of personal development, mm-hmm. and I'd never had anybody share it that way. About uh, how we do some of our visualizations. The visualization, the colors and the music. And I, the- I'll give some of them, but um, I want to keep some yeah, of them exactly. for the people I this coach. Is what you do. But what I will say is that most people don't visualize what they visualize. So when you ask them, hey, do you visualize? Like, oh yeah, I visualize. And then I'll say, okay, so what are you looking at? And they can't even tell you where the camera is, for example. A visualization is you're seeing something. So it went back for me. I was playing baseball when I got hurt. And the guy goes, we're going to visualize you hitting line drive up the middle. Because you're trying to rehab. And yeah, and I was rehabbing and getting yeah. better. And, and, he, and he, goes, okay. he goes, did you see it? I go, yeah, I hit a line drive up the middle. He goes, okay, good. Where was the camera? I go, what? He goes, where's the camera in your mind? I go, I don't know. What, what are you talking about? He goes, you just said you visualized. You visualized, right? I go, uh, he goes, where's the camera? He goes, Ed, is the camera over the center field? Like, are you watching it on TV and it's going over the pitcher and watching you in the batter's box? Is that the camera? Or is it you in the batter's box looking out at the pitcher? Or is it you in the on-deck circle watching the whole thing happen? I went, I don't know. He goes, then you didn't visualize. It matters. I went, oh. So, because by the way, we're trying to build these new neural connections and then we're trying to coat them with myelin. So the more specific, the more repetitive, the more it's an actual change. So he goes, pick the camera angle. I go, uh, it's me in the batter's box. He goes, okay, now we can visualize. And then it went all the way down to, where's the ball? Did, can you see, is the pitcher left or right-handed? I'm like, I don't know. He goes, how do you not know? But no one knows. And then we would break it down all the way to where I could see, he goes, can you see the release point? He's right-handed, it's above his right ear. Okay, good. And then the ball would come in. Can you see the stitches rotating? Can you slow it down? When you're in the batter's box, can you see the bat hitting the ball? I go, no. He goes, now see it, see the bat hit the ball now the stitches should be rotating back the other way now and it was that specific and then with the ball would go right over his right ear and so i got to the point where man i could see this in a very specific visualization and then he would have me go speed it up do it in fast motion now do it in slow motion hey make it black and white make it color and so what ha- what's happening is is i'm I'm, I'm doing, I'm creating all kinds of n- new pathways by seeing the same thing over and over and over again. And when we do that, now we've actually started to rewire ourselves. And so what you experience that I'm not going to cover on the show is I can teach people how to do that in a very hyper focused way in about any area of their life to where their mind now becomes a weapon in their favor. And here's why that's important. The things we fear in our life and worry about we visualize those a with lot. great it's, specificity. It's almost like a mantra in their head. It is a pattern and it's a loop and you run it and then you do it over and then you'll slow it down and then you'll add a motion to it. And sometimes on bad days, you'll make it black and white and you'll see it from, and you can flip the camera angle and see it. So on problems and worries, our brain's incredible at doing this. But on things we want, it's like, oh, I see the ocean. I see my dream house. Really? What do you see? I don't know, <laughs> but I see a picture of it. Okay, you see one <laughs> angle, it's a snapshot. Yeah. Is there sound? Did you add anything auditory? Did you add anything kinesthetic? Smells, Did yeah. you change the co- color? Can you smell anything? What's your, and it really what it comes down to is developing what we call like real sensory acuity. The more senses, the more acute it is, the more we've built real pathways in our brain. No one's ever asked me this on a podcast, so, and I don't wanna keep some of this for the stuff <laughs> yeah, that I do. You keep unpacking but it. But having like, said it, cause I get very passionate about this is like, you're a way better visualizer than you think. You just do it with your problems. Mm. You're really good at it. And you do it all the time. And you, and, you, and you don't even have to hit a button. You can do it when you wake up. You can do it when you go to sleep. You can do it when you're driving in your car. You can do it sometimes. You're just having a great time. You're like, nah, let me give myself a hit on my worries. Bam. And you get a little bit more of your worries. Ah, what I'm passionate about. You know? And so we're great at this in the negative things in our life. The people that are most blissful and successful and do it the easiest. Let me say this last to you. When you get good at really visualizing and creating new neural pathways, whatever you want, just seeing things more repeatedly, the success or bliss piece of it is much 
easier to do and feels less taxing on you. You're less fatigued, less stressed, and you want to do it again. Doing it without it, you still achieved without it. Mm. You still uh, acquired things without it. But let's just be real. For a lot of you, it wasn't what you thought it would be when you got there because it was so much of a taxing grind to get there. Where what if there were a way to do it that's still difficult, it's still a grind, but it's it's far less taxing on you emotionally and physically and psychologically to get there. It's interesting because as you say this, it reminded me that I have an easier time worrying. Sure. Isn't that crazy oh, that like we're nice. literally connecting the neural pathways of the things we don't want easier as a default than the desire of the... By the way, 98.9% .9 of the people listening to this are going, oh, me too. Me too. Most wow. human beings, because it's like been we, a The pattern. visualization, literally the way you're saying that we can turn it black and white and we can hit it from different angles. But what if this would happen? Of course. But you're we right. never do that for the positive You don't. Stuff. You don't run different... By the way, with your worries, you can play the same video with like eight different scenarios too. And, and it'll all be negative ones that you run in a loop. And then you got all these triggers to run them. And it doesn't take a lot to get you into that state. Whereas most people have no triggers for the positive, for the positive. no triggers for the visualization, no triggers for building those new pathways. And that's what you're saying is build the triggers and the, the, the mechanisms to get into that visualization easier because it'll actually allow you to create yeah. easier. And, and the last thing I would say to it is it's just a muscle. Mm. You're gonna, you probably won't be very good at it at first. And then the more you do it, you're like, man, I'm getting better and better at this. I, by the way, there are things that you are good at it with. So if there's ever been like um, a person you wanted to date yeah. when you were younger or now that you're sort of obsessed with them a little bit, maybe not in an unhealthy, I'm talking about stalkerish, yeah. but like, you've had lots of visualizations about it. Yeah. You've pictured lots of different angles, lots of different <laughs> stuff, some of which you don't even want to repeat, right? Yeah. But you've got, there's a little glimpse in your ability to do it. There's a little glimpse there on the positive things you want. You could visualize it. You could see it. You can see all kinds of stuff. You can slow it down. You could speed it up. You can change the angle. So you have the ability within you. It's just very minute compared to the negative things. To use it.